إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أحسن الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإن شر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار So my lecture today is on the hadith, the famous hadith of Al-Irbad bin Sariya رضي الله عنه that you are all familiar with and it is going to be the commentary of Sheikh Rabi' ibn Hadi Hafizahullah Ta'ala upon this hadith. And so in this hadith, Al Irbad, he mentioned, Wa'adhana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Maw'idatan dharafat minha al uyun, wa wajilat minha al qulub. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave us an admonition, a khutbah, a sermon by which the eyes shed tears and the hearts were, were moved or were shaken. So we said, فَقُلْنَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ We said, O Messenger of Allah, it's as if this is a farewell sermon. As, it's as if you are going to leave us uh, you know, after this sermon. فَمَاذَا تَعْحَدُوا إِلَيْنَا So what is it that you can advisers with. So he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Taraktukum ala al bayda Layliha ka nahariha la yazihu anha ba'di illa halik. I have left you upon al bayda al bayda which means something which is very apparent and clear and visible and you know there's no confusion. Laylaha kanaharaha. Its night is like its day, and no one deviates or swerves from it after me, except one who is destroyed. And then he continued, "Woman yaish minkum fasirah tilaf and kathira, fa alikum bima arafu min sunnati wa sunnati al khulafa al rashidin al mahdiyin." So whoever amongst you lives for long then he will see much differing. And upon you is to stick what, to what you know of my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa. And upon you, wa alikum bi ta'a, upon you is to obey. Wa in kana abadan habashiyan, even if it is to in an Abyssinian slave. Addu alayha bin nawajid, bite onto it with your molars. For inna al mu'min kal jamal al anif, kulla ma qid in qad. So bite onto it with your molars. For indeed, a believer is like a compliant, submissive camel. And wherever it is, you know, wherever it is directed or taken, it complies, you know, with, with, with submission. This is the nature of a of a believer. So this hadith is, is a mighty and tremendous hadith and many of the ulama uh, have commented upon this from them, Sheikh Al-Fawzan. Uh, I have some speech of Sheikh Al-Fawzan. If we have time, we can go through that as well, inshallah. But introducing the speech of Sheikh Rabi'i, in order for a Muslim to be upon istiqama, if we want to be upon istiqama, if we want to be upon this clarity, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned, then we must know this path. We must know the path, which is the path of truth. And not only that, we must also know the path which opposes the truth. Otherwise, we end up in confusion. Because as the scholars have mentioned, that sometimes a person, in fact, this is a hadith of Hudayfa bin al-Yaman, radiyallahu anhu, kan al nas يسألون النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الخير وكنت أسأله عن الشر مخافة أن يدركني. The people used to ask the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم about the good 
What is the good? But I used to ask him about the evil for fear that it may reach me or afflict me. So it's not sufficient only just to know what is the truth and not know what is falsehood and what are the various turuq of falsehood because this will lead you into, into confusion and this is why, in fact, this, this point or this principle that we are mentioning here and which Sheikh Rabi himself will speak about in detail we see it even in the da'wah of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Shaykh Al-Islam Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab in his Sittat Muwadi' I mean the Seerah, the, the six places in the Seerah he mentions one of the points as well that if the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to the, to the pagans of Quraysh and the only thing he said to them was worship Allah alone or worship Allah they would have said yes, you know, we don't disagree with you let's, let's all worship Allah where's the disagreement? They would have agreed with him. There would be no issue. They would not have opposed him and fought against him and turned the people against him and, you know, waged war against him. It was only after he criticized their way, refuted their shirk and spoke ill of their, you know, uh, the, the, the falsehood of what they are worshipping. It is when he clarified that and through which the reality of the Tawheed that he was calling to became clear, <clears throat> it's only then that they specified enmity towards him. Right? And this point is very, very important to understand, especially when it comes to, when it comes to da'wah and calling people to uh, sunnah and salafiyyah. Because if we mention, for example, only what is Tawheed, this is, you know, this is Tawheed, we don't explain what is shirk, then we are going to leave people confused about what are we really calling to. And if we explain what is Sunnah, but we don't explain what is Bid'ah, we are going to leave people confused about the reality of what we are calling to. Right? So, the call of the prophets and messengers isn't just one-sided. They called to the truth and they warned from everything, every path, every speech, every belief, every statement which opposes the truth. Right? And this is what brings clarity to a Muslim, clarity to a person who's upon the Sunnah, a person who, who, who seeks the truth. And so in principle what we are saying is that our da'wah is built upon teaching the truth and also teaching what opposes it. And the Shaykh, Shaykh Rabi ibn Hadi, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, his commentary on this hadith will begin. And there are many, many uh, tremendous points that the Shaykh mentions for our benefit. And we have to also understand that when the Shaykh, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, is commenting on this hadith, it is on the basis of decades and decades and decades of personal experience in the da'wah having interacted with and mixed with uh, people like, or groups like Al-Ikhwan, Al-Muslimin, Al Muslim Brotherhood, Jama'atul Tablighi, the Sufiya, and from that <coughs> understood what this hadith contains of a mention of the problems and a mention also of the solutions. Right, so this Commentary from the Shaykh is, is a tremendous insight which we should listen to very carefully and take all the benefits from this. So the Shaykh, after mentioning the hadith of Al-Irbad, which we mentioned earlier, he starts off with the first uh, point which is that the hadith contains, which is as sam'u wa ta'a li wulatil umur. So the first principle, among the many principles in this hadith, is the principle of hearing and obeying the Muslim authorities or the rulers irrespective of who they might be even if it is an Abyssinian slave and he says um, that this is the first what is the first principle that determines the behavior 
that we that we have, the positions that we hold, and our associations that we have. What is the first principle that comes even before hearing and obeying? It is the taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? So before we even discuss the issue of obeying the ruler, and likewise other things that are going to be mentioned in this hadith, right? before all of that, before we act upon any of these things, there's something even more fundamental, more important because before everything else. Because this one thing determines all other relationships. As the Shaykh says, فَالْبَنْدُ الْأَوَّلْ فِي كُلِّ تَصَرُّفَاتِنَا وَمَوَاقِفِنَا وَعِلَاقَتِنَا بِاللَّهِ هُوَ تَقْوَى اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ The very first uh, principle that determines all of our interactions. Interaction with Allah, interaction with the messenger, interaction with the rulers, interaction with, with your wife, your husband, your children, everybody. The one that you trade with, the one that you, everything. It is the taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the Shaykh says, فَعَلَيْنَا أَن نَبْتَقِ اللَّهِ وَأَن نُرَاقِبَ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى Upon us is to fear Allah and to be observant of Him. The T is watching us and that He sees everything that we do. And we should observe this in our relationship with our family with the society, with the Muslims, until even with the non-Muslims, we should observe this taqwa of Allah in all of our interactions, you know, at the level of the, the individual, ala mustawa al-afrad, wal jama'at, wal duwal, at every level, at the level of the individual, at the level of the, 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 the group, and at the level of the, the nation. So the Shaykh says, ala al-Muslim an yuraqib Allah, في كل هذه الحالات upon the Muslim is to be observant of Allah in all of these situations and these scenarios and that he should guide himself with the guidance of Allah in every mawqif in every position in every tasarruf in every behavior or in interaction in all of these situations that the Shaykh has basically pointed to and one of those situations is the issue of uh, hearing and obeying the rulers in what they command, of obedience to Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So this obedience is in whatever is obedience to Allah. The Shaykh says, وَلَا طَاعَةَ لِمَخْلُوقٍ فِي مَعْسِيَةِ اللَّهِ كَائِنًا مَنْ كَانْ There is no obedience to the creation if it involves disobedience to Allah, whoever it may be. For indeed, uh, the Sheikh says, obedience is only in whatever Allah has commanded. So if someone close relative of yours, or a you know, distant relative of yours, or a ruler, or anybody commands you with something in which there is the command of Allah, then فَعَلِيكَ بِالسَّمْعِ وَالطَّعَةِ You must hear and obey. Whoever, whoever is the source, you don't look at... Who is this person saying it? Is he, is he richer than me? Is he poorer than me? Is he, you know, is, does he have a higher status than me? Is, is, he, is he an enemy? Is he a friend? Is he a foe? Is he this? No. If the command to obey Allah comes to you from whoever it comes to you, then you obey Allah. Why? Because this is obedience to Allah. It's not obedience to, to the one who brought it to you. It's obedience to Allah. So this is the quality of a believer. He doesn't look at who or what is telling him. If it entails obedience to Allah, then he, then he follows. Then the Shaykh says, وَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعِشْ Mentioning the, the hadith, وَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يَعِشْ مِنْكُمْ فَسَيَرَ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا The Shaykh says, this is a situation that we find ourselves in, that we will find ourselves in. فَمَا الْمَخْرَجْ What is the escape? Whoever amongst you lives for long, he will see great differing. The Sheikh says, "Hada jahmi, wa hada mu'tazali, wa hada naqshabandi, wa hada sahrawardi, wa hada tijani, wa hada mirghani." I mean, he mentioned some sects. So we look around. For example, what do we see when we look at the Muslims? We see this this person here. He's upon the way of the Jahmiya. This person here is upon the way of the Mu'tazila. We have all these Sufi groups and Sufi sects. 
which are present in this country, in our countries, in the Muslim countries, Naqshbandis, Sahrawardis, Tijanis, Chishdi, so on and so forth. All of these are, you know, the, the Sufi tariqas, they, they follow these paths because they believe these paths are going to lead them to Allah. And they believe that the heads of these paths, that somehow they receive inspiration, they receive revelation, in some cases directly from Allah Azza wa Jal. Right? This is tremendous misguidance. So we see that the Muslims are put to trial by these people, by the Jahmiyyah, Mu'tazila, the Khawarij in the field of Siyasa, right? the Sufiya in the field of worship. If you look at all of these groups and sects, you see that the deviation is, is, is in a different area. So deviation in reason and intellect, right? with the Jahmiyyah, Mu'tazila, because they used reason over revelation. We see in the field of Ibadah, worship, Sufiya, all these various groups of Sufis, they resemble the Christians, right, in the way they went astray. Uh, this is amongst the Muslims as well. And uh, the Sheikh is mentioning all of these, you know, all of these uh, groups, and he says, what did the messenger advise us if we reach and we see this, you know, this situation? He said, the Sheikh said, uh, that the Messenger said, "Alikum bi sunnati wa sunnati al rashidin al mahdiyin." And then he continues. The Sheikh says, mentioning more examples of the misguidance: "Hada ishtiraki, wa hada shiyuri, wa hada demokrati, wa hada ilmani." Right. So not only do we find mistakes in, in creed and in worship and in the use of reason, we see even in the field of politics field of siyasa we see around us even amongst the muslim lands because the muslim lands uh, they were affected by these things of socialism and communism and democracy and secularism and alhamdulillah the muslim scholars the salafi scholars we see decades ago they wrote about these things they clarified these things sheikh ibn baz rahimahullah he did a critique and refutation of, of communism Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, rahimahullah, in his 20s, he's barely 23, 24, he wrote a tremendous book on the refutation of socialism. He listed 70 or so arguments from the Qur'an and the Sunnah, a refutation of socialism, the idea that the wealth that you possess, you know, is, is a shared ownership for everybody. Everybody has a right. You don't own, you know, there's no private property. He demolished that because many of the Muslim rulers, even back in, in the, the 20th century, the mid-20th century, they were affected by, the, by, by, by these ideas. And so the scholars wrote and clarified these things. And so uh, the Sheikh is saying, all of this, Hadafi Majali Siyasa, right? We find even in the field of, of politics, all of this confusion, all of these ideas, all of these philosophies, right? So we are surrounded by all this confusion. Right? Khawarij, Jahmiyyah, Mu'tazila. <coughs> The Sufiya, Fibabi Siyas in the in the field of, of politics, there's so much confusion as well. What are we supposed to do? What did the messenger advise us? He told us, Alikum bi sunnati wa sunnati al rashidin al mahdiyin. And the Shaykh goes on to say, Addu Aliha bin Nawajith, mentioning the hadith, wa iyakum wa muhdathati al umur, fa inna kulla bid'atin dalala. The Shaykh says, Right here is the makhraj. Right here is the exit, is the solution. Right? It is, it is that we stick to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah and the sunnah of the Khulafa and we bite onto it with the Mawlas and we beware and we are cautious of all the newly invented matters, for every newly invented matter is misguidance. And so the Sheikh says, هذا هو المخرج الذي فيه النجاة فيه النجاة فإنك لما ترى طوفانا من الفتن وطوفانا من البدع وطوفانا من الطرق وما تدري أين الحق كيف المخرج. The Sheikh says, when you see this scenario and this situation, which is today, when you see like a طوفان, like basically like a like like a tornado of tribulations coming upon you. And a tornado 
of innovations coming upon you and a tornado of so many different paths and ways that people are claiming right people are claiming until even you know even we find with Salafi being a Salafi there are so many claimants there are so many claimants to Salafi just like we see there are people who ascribe to Islam the Philosopher the Batiniya Rafida Qadiyaniya Right? They have no connection to, you know, in, in the asal of, of their creed and what they're upon. There's no, no connection to, to Islam. But they, what they claim to be Muslim. In the same way, the people claim to be upon the Sunnah. In the same way, people claim to be upon Salafiyyah. Right? But the reality is, is otherwise. So all of this confusion the Shaykh is mentioning, this confusion of, of trials, of innovations, of so many paths that, that the average Muslim... He is utterly and totally confused. Is this a situation that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the knowledge that Allah gave to him about what is to come? Did he leave us without guidance? Was he unaware of this? Of course not. He gave us the problem so we could avoid it and he also gave us the solution if we reach that, if we reach that uh, moment or that time. So the Sheikh says that the way of deliverance is Safinat Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? The path of delivery is, is the ship. Is the ship of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is the ship of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and the ten who were promised paradise. Right? It is what 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 it, it is their sunnah. And their sunnah is one sunnah. It is the book and the sunnah. We never find the Sheikh mentions that Abu Bakr differed with, with, with Umar and Umar differed with you know uh, Uthman or that the manhaj was, of Abu Bakr was different to the manhaj of Umar or the manhaj of Umar was different to the manhaj of Uthman. No, we do not find this whatsoever. Rather we find that all of them were united upon a single path, one path, one way, one methodology, one creed. And this is the manhaj as sadid as sahih which Allah Azawajal, he put in his book and in the sunnah of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the shaykh continues, he says that if you look at the situation today, you see that everyone has an opinion Everyone has a jama'ah, everyone has a position, and you, you don't know, you, you, you end up being confused. And, you know, you don't know who is the muhiq, who is the mubdil, who is the one who is speaking the truth, who is the one who is speaking with falsehood. You don't, you don't know, you're confused. And you don't know who is the sunni, and who is the bid'i. Right? So what is the faisal, what is the criterion? The Shaykh mentions again, فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَحْدِيِينَ عَدُّوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِفِ The Shaykh is asking, do we see the Muslims doing this? Do we see, do we see amongst the calls, of all the calls, who amongst the Muslims is making this call? Meaning, teaching the Muslims these things that the Messenger told his companions of. That you are going to see controversy, you are going to see difference. This is the problem and here's the solution. Who do we see amongst all of the calls doing this and fulfilling this obligation? We only find it amongst the people who adhere to the way of the Sahaba, the Salaf, the scholars, uh, who are upon the way of the Salaf, who do this. Whereas everybody else is trying to call to his group, increase his numbers, right? involve them. In, in politics, involve them in democracy, gather numbers. They're not, they're not worried about the truth. They want to compromise the truth. They want to ignore the differences. They want to accommodate the differences. This is not what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he left as guidance for his Ummah. This opposes that guidance. So who amongst the people do we find, the Sheikh is asking, have the Muslims done this? Have they... Have, do they call people to adhere to this advice of the Messenger of Allah? No, we don't find this. We see, um, you know, we, we, we see 
Instead, we see only one jama'ah, the Shaykh says. If you research, if you do your research, لا شك أنك إذا بحثت تجد جماعة قائمين بالدعوة إلى الله يوجهون الناس إلى الاحتقام إلى الله وإلى, وإلى رسول الله. If you do the research, if you find, so if you are an average Muslim, and this is how many people, well, alhamdulillah, they come to Salafiyyah, right? Allah guides them to uh, repent and to start practicing, right? So they start establishing the prayer, they start, you know, rectifying, and then they, re- and then they find, they go to the local mosque, and then over time they realize, wait a minute, these people, they seem to be, you know, they, they, these people are ikhwani. Oh, these people are tablighi, right? So a person goes on a journey, he goes on a path, right? And then eventually he starts realizing, hang on, there's something called, you know, the sunnah and, and the sahaba and, and the salaf. And, and eventually he finds his way to the general idea that the way of the salaf is the truth. And then when he comes to the way of, 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 of you know, he understands generally the way of the salaf, he realizes that of all the people who ascribe to the way of the salaf, there is a group that I see who are basically clarifying the truth. He sees the, the, the scholars and he sees the people who follow the scholars. And eventually he comes to realize that there is a jama'ah out there that is calling to what the messenger of Allah is calling to. Right. So in other words, the, the point being made that the average Muslim, when he, when he comes to uh, the sunnah, right, it is possible for him. To find people who are calling to the truth. This is what the Shaykh is, is alluding to, and he, he will expand upon this later. So, uh, this group, what is their principle? Their principle is the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal فَإِن تَنَازَأْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا If you dispute in anything, then return it back to Allah and His Messenger if you truly believe in Allah and the last day. That is better and more excellent as an outcome. The Shaykh says this verse, think about this verse. How and when was this verse revealed? This ayah was revealed in a dispute that took place between two companions. One of them was... um, uh, a man from the Ansar, and um, basically there was a there was a, a dispute between Az Zubair bin Al Awam and another man from the Ansar. They disputed about this uh, like oasis, this this place where there's like a stream uh, about some land, and they had a dispute in a place called uh, Al Harra, and uh, they raised the issue to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And after looking at the affair, the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he judged in favor uh, of, uh, or, or, he, or he gave the judgment. And as Zubair bin al-Awam, he accepted the judgment. But the other Ansari, he became angry. He wasn't happy with the judgment of the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so then this ayah was revealed shortly afterwards. This verse was 59. And then... A verse, six verses later in verse 65, Allah Azza wa Jal revealed another ayah. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجْرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتْ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا He said, no by your Lord, they cannot have faith until they make you a judge in all disputes between them and then they find in their souls no resistance or, or you know um, uh, opposition from that which you have judged and they when you sallimu taslima they accept with a full submission this ayah was revealed in relation to a dispute about a piece of land a worldly issue how then do you think it would apply to issues of creed Issues of methodology, issues of the religion, issues of worship, issues of dealing, issues of halal, issues of haram. Even more so, our disputes have to be returned to the messenger of Allah, uh, to, to his way, to the way of the companions, and you know, for, for, for acceptance and full submission. So the Shaykh says, I advise the Shabab, I implore the Shabab, 
And I implore all of the callers, the du'at, those who are involved in calling to Allah, I implore them and I ask them, have they stood in front of Allah and called themselves to account and ask themselves, in this issue, am I upon the truth in this issue? So you ask yourself, in this position that I'm holding, am I, am I upon the truth or am I following my desires? Or is it because, you know, am I, am I influenced by, by, by my companionship? Am I only holding this position? Is it because of wealth? Is it because someone was my friend, my companion? Is it because I feel, well, what's, what's the reason? Why am I holding this view? Why am I upon this, 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 this position? So the Sheikh is saying, I implore the Shabab, the youth, and the Du'at that they ask themselves and call themselves to account this Qadiyya, this matter. Am I upon the truth? Or is it my, you know, my soul that has kind of uh, led me in this direction? Is it that I return the affair back to Allah for judgment to Allah? Or is it something else? What's the reason? And um, the Sheikh says that we know that many, many people, they face like a steep slope. There are many, many uh, shubuhat, many, many misconceptions, many, many desires that, you know, that misguide people. It comes between a person and between reflecting like this. Right? Meaning, meaning that many of us, many people, there are many things that prevent us from sitting down and calling ourselves to account and asking this position that I hold in this issue. Am I upon the truth? And am I really sincerely seeking the truth? Or is there something else in, in going on? Right? And there are so many shubuhat, there are so many desires, there are so many things going on that a person, you know, it would prevent him from actually doing this. And from actually realizing, uh, you know, that maybe he's not, not upon the truth. And, you know, from, from acting and implementing this command of Allah Azza wa Jal. And so this is why the Sheikh says, for this reason you find that there are many shubah wa mughalatat, there are many in the mind of, 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 of a person, there are many misconceptions, there are many misunderstandings, there are many doubts that come between him and between him taking the correct sound position in an issue. Right? But this is what Iman demands from a person. Iman demands from a person that he always seeks the truth. He always pursues the truth. He always refers judgment back to Allah and his messenger. And he refuses to be affected by shubuhat. He throws the shubuhat against the wall, as the Sheikh says. And, you know, he, he accepts the command of Allah and his messenger. The Sheikh continues to mention the point that indeed, there are so many doubts, so many uh, misconceptions, so many darknesses which come and they prevent a Muslim from reaching this very, very high level. This high level of being in submission to Allah and His Messenger, being upon the truth, being upon the Sunnah of the Messenger and the Sunnah of the Khulafa and the Sunnah of the, the way of the Sahaba. There are, these are so many barriers and hindrances which come and prevent a person from re reaching from reaching this. And so the Shaykh says that uh, every mu'min who is truthful to Allah in his iman, then he should be pleased with the hukm of Allah, pleased with referring back the issue to Allah. And this is something that, you know, uh, many of the calls that people are upon, they do not teach people this principle. The Ikhwanis do not teach people this principle to pursue the truth and seek the truth, right? And, and to uh, leave the Shabbat. They, they, they don't teach this to, to, to the people. They don't give tarbiya to the Shabab upon this Asal, as the Sheikh says. لا, لا تربي الشباب على هذا الأصل الأصيل وعلى هذا المبدع العظيم. They do not nurture the youth upon this. That, that wherever the truth comes to you, you know, accept it. Seek the truth and accept it. 
Instead, you see these people, the the, the jama'at and the individuals, they want to tie they want to tie you to to themselves, to the jama'ah or to the individual, as if all of truth exists and is found only in one jama'ah or in one person, right? And they, this this is the way of the people of Hizbiyah. It is not the way of the people of the Sunnah. The Sheikh goes on after this to mention a principle that these people invented in the 20th century in order to misguide the youth. The Sheikh says, There is a principle that the Abanu fi maktafakna alihi wa yu'dhiru ba'duna ba'dan fi maktalafna fi. This is an Ikhwani principle, which is that let us cooperate with each other in that which we agree upon, and let us pardon each other in that which we disagree upon. Right? This is an evil principle. It is an evil principle that demolishes even the very foundations of Islam and the Sunnah. Because what this principle means is that we can cooperate with all people by finding a common ground. Right? So we can cooperate with, in fact, as the Sheikh explains, the person who first spoke of this principle is Muhammad Rashid Rida. Muhammad Rashid Rida. And from him, uh, al Hassan al uh, from him, Hassan al Banna took it and made it a principle for the Muslim Brotherhood. Right? And, uh, but eventually the Sheikh says that, you know, uh, he, he, he set up this principle in order to cooperate with the Shia. And then afterwards he realized it is false. He realized it was false. Then he refuted it. And he brought many, many evidences uh, to show uh, that this principle is, is, is uh, corrupt and evil. And he rejected it and refuted it. However, we know that uh, Hassan al-Banna, you know, he took this principle and he used it as a basis in his jama'ah, the Muslim Brotherhood. So he wanted to unite the Shi'i with the Sunni, with the Jahmi, with the Mu'tazili, with the Ash'ari, with everybody. Right? With everybody. Uh, in order to, you know... Uh, follow his agenda or pursue his agenda. And the Sheikh says this principle demolishes and undermines the other principle in the religion that the Sheikh mentioned about seeking the truth, referring affairs back to Allah, back to the Messenger, back to the Sunnah, like in the hadith of Al Irbad, Fa'alikum bi sunnati wa sunnati al rajin al Mahdiyin. This evil principle, this evil principle is, is something that undermines and destroys what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left for us as a solution to the problems he knew that his Ummah was, was going to find itself in. All of this confusion, all of these creeds, all of these methodologies. Right? So these people, when they, when they invent these principles, they, 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 they destroy and they undermine uh, the guidance of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At the same time, the Shaykh says, these same people, the Ikhwanis, Sururis, Takfiris, Khawarij, you see these people at the same time, you'll see them calling for the establishment of the Hakimiyyah of Allah. Let us establish Allah's law, let us establish Allah's rule. Right? And they are liars in that respect, because if they were truthful, if you were truthful, in wanting to establish the hukm of Allah, then you would, have, you would have established this principle and this advice of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? Whoever amongst you is, will live for long, will see great controversy. Right? You must stick to my sunnah, and the sunnah of the rightly guided khulafa, and you miss, must give obedience to the ruler, even if it is an Abyssinian slave, and beware of innovations, for every innovation is misguidance. If you truly wanted to establish the judgment of Allah and His Messenger, then why, why don't you refer back to this hadith? Right? So this is a contradiction that the Shaykh is pointing out. That these people, they are the very first people who reject the right of Allah to, to, to rule, the hakimi of Allah. Right? Because they, they, they hold on to these false, futile principles... And they push them into the minds of the people 
And by doing so, they are the very first people who reject the hakimi of Allah and you know, they, 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 they oppose it by way, by way of these false principles. Ya Ikhwan, this is not limited only to those people whose misguidance is clear. To a Salafi, we know that the misguidance of the Muslim Brotherhood is clear. But do not think that this is only something that only an Ikhwani is going to do, or a Takfiri is going to do, or a Tablighi is going to no. Because there are many, many people who wear the garb of Salafiyyah, they wear the garb of the Sunnah, and they bring similar principles or principles which, which are disguised into the ranks of the people of the Sunnah. And over the past 20 years, 20, 30 years, our scholars, the likes of Sheikh Al-Albani, Rahimahullah, Sheikh Imbaz, Sheikh Murthaymeen, Sheikh Rabi, Sheikh Al-Fawzan, uh, Sheikh Ahmed Al-Najmi, Sheikh Zaid Al-Madghali, all of these scholars, there were many, many characters and personalities which appeared. And they tried to bring some evil principles, similar, similar to this principle, into the ranks of the Salafis. And the scholars refuted them and, and, and you know, exposed them. People like Adnan Arur, Adnan Arur, right? They, 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 they tried to take this principle of, al, of Hassan al-Banna and then try to disguise it, right? And, and conceal it so that people wouldn't recognize that it's really the same thing, right? Adnan Arur, Abu Hassan al-Ma'rabi, right? Uh, Ali, Ali al-Halabi, right? Some people going in the direction of being soft and accommodating Ahlul Bid'ah and other people going in the other direction of going extreme right, being extreme against Ahlul Sunnah Yahya al-Hajuri, Mahmoud al-Haddad right, people like that where, where they brought this harshness and sternness against the people of the Sunnah which, which is not needed and on the other hand you have people who are being lenient and soft all of these people, uh, the, the scholars, they spoke about them but the point that we want to make is that do not be deceived just because a person comes and he dresses the garb of Salafiyya. Right? Because there are people present in the field of Da'wah today in this country, other countries, where they come to you with, 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 with this garb of Salafiyya. But when you look at what they are promoting, it is pure Ikhwani. I'll give you one example. An individual by the name of Abdurrahman Hassan. Right? He's some uh, Somali, I believe. And he spoke of a principle where he said that you are not allowed to warn someone against a person until you know that that person is listening and reading from his books. In other words, and he, and he actually gave this example, he said, Hamza Yusuf, for example, Hamza Yusuf is a Sufi, Ash'ari, right? Misguided innovator. You cannot warn a Muslim from him until and unless you know he's actually reading the book of Hamza Yusuf or he's listening to a tape of Hamza Yusuf, right? And he mentioned this as a principle. He said, you would be backbiting if you do so. This is from the most evil falsehood. It's the most evil principle. It is an Ikhwani principle, and he's pushing this in the name of Salafiyyah, right? This principle is demolished from so many angles, from so many angles, from the Qur'an, from the Sunnah, from the way of the Sahaba, from the Imams of the Salaf, right? In the time of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu was there any Khariji? Was there a Khariji? Was there a Khariji in the time of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Yes or no? Was there a Qadari? Then why did the Messenger of Islam speak about the Khawarij and speak about the Qadari and warn his Ummah from them? When no one had even heard of a Qadari or even what is a Qadari, why did he warn the Ummah from this evil? Right? There are so many angles of refutation of this Baqir. So the point being, um, out there in the field of Da'wah, as the Shaykh is mentioning, there is so much confusion. There are Mughalatat. There are misconceptions, misunderstandings, there are shubuhat, there are doubts, right? And 
these doubts can enter into the ranks of, of the Salafis and even the Salafis can be confused and they can't see what's truth, what's falsehood, what's Sunnah, what's Bid'ah. You know, who is the Muhiq? Who is the one who's establishing the truth? And who is the Mubtil? Who is the one who is, you know, uh, upon, upon falsehood and establishing falsehood? Right? A Salafi cannot be confused like this. A Salafi is always upon the truth, upon clarity. And we're not saying that a Salafi has to have, you know, a deep, profound knowledge on every issue that he knows all of the, you know, every deep... No, we're not saying that. We're, we're not, because we know everybody is at a different level. But at minimum, you should know that in this issue, this is the truth, right? Because it's been clarified by the people of knowledge, or it's been clarified with evidence, and I know that this is the truth, khalas, though. That's enough for you. Right? At least at that, you should know this is where we stand, and this is, you know, where I stand, and then that's it. And that's for, like, a deep rooted. This is not for everybody. But at least that clarity, in principle, should be there. And the shaykh goes on, uh, after he mentioned the point about these people, how they, these people, they, they, they present these false principles, they introduce these false ikhwani principles, and then, then they claim to be establishing the hakimi of Allah Azza wa Yet they are the first people to disobey Allah, disobey the Messenger, and not implement you know, the criterion and, and the hukm of Allah and the Messenger in, in their da'wah. And so the Shaykh then goes on Al Manhaj al Islami al Sahih, Annahu Kullun Yukhadu min Kaulihi wa Yurad, Illa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The sound, correct Islamic methodology is. That every person can have his speech, can have his statement accepted, or he can have it rejected, except the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He says, "Wa min hadal mantalik, wa min hadal mantalik, Qali bin Abbas radhiyallahu anhuma." He says, "From this starting point, the starting point of every man can have his saying rejected or accepted, except the Messenger of Allah." Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam On this principle Ibn Abbas Once there was an issue Someone came to him Asking about this issue of, of Hajj and Umrah Right of, of combining Hajj with Umrah And something to do with that And when Ibn Abbas Informed this person uh, About you know what's, what's in the Sunnah They began to say But Abu Bakr And Umar They say such and such and then Ibn Abbas got very angry. And he said, he said to this, he said to this uh, person that I fear that stones are going to descend from the heaven. That I say to you, Qala Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wa taqulun, Qala Abu Bakr wa Umar. I fear that stones are going to descend from the, from the sky. That I'm saying to you, the Messenger of Allah said such and such, and you are telling me, oh, but we heard Abu Bakr and Umar say such and such. Right? The Shaykh says, this Hadal Habr al Azim, this, this amazing scholar, this mighty scholar, who is the cousin of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he showed rejection against the one who opposed the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah with the speech of Abu Bakr and, and, and Umar. And the Shaykh says, yet today we see. That there are people who oppose the sunnah of the messenger of Allah وسلم, with the speech of, with people who are, you know, they, they, they are not even the level of students of knowledge. Right? And they oppose the sunnah of the messenger, let alone opposing by way of the status of Abu Bakr or Umar radiallahu anhu. And so, uh, the Shaykh says that these people, what they do, is they, 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 they take such individuals as the source of legislation, right? And they take principles from them, and they make everything revolve around that one personality. This is what they do, right? And this is something that is alien to our da'wah. Our da'wah is not built upon specifying one man, one individual, one personality. No, we don't call this. We don't call you to ourselves. We ask you, take whatever knowledge that is, 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 is the truth that agrees with the sunnah from us and take from other than us. Don't just sit here and listen to me. Take it from, go to other 
students and, and mashayikh and, and listen to them, right? We, no, th this call of, of, of yeah, as, as the Sheikh says, he says that uh, they take an individual فَيَتَّخِذُونَ مِنْهُ مَصْدَرْ تَشْرِيعَ أَقْوَالُهُ لَا تُرَدِّ وَيُتَّخَذْ مِنْهَا الْقُوَائِدْ وَيُتَّخَذْ مِنْ, 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 مِنْ شَخْصِهِ فَلَكًا يُدَارُ عَلَيْهِ It's like as if you take one person and you make him like a circle where everything revolves around this one person. This is, this is, not, this is not the way. And we do not call to this. This is the way of the people of Hizbiya. Right? We call to the truth and whoever brings the truth and whoever conveys the truth. The Sheikh says, This wahadi hiya ibadatul ahbar wal ruhban allati haddhar Allahu minha. This thing here, what you find, the jama'at, what they do, they tell you to one individual, one figurehead, one leader. This is from the worship that the Jews and Christians used to do with their priests and their rabbis, which Allah warned from, and which the Messenger وسلم, that they warned from. And he mentions the hadith of Adi bin Hatim, who used to be a Christian, and the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, you know, he recited the verse, اتَّخَذُوا أَحْبَارَهُمْ وَرُحْبَانَهُمْ أَرْبَابًا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ And so Adi, when he heard this verse, that they, meaning the Jews and Christians, took their priests and their rabbis as lords besides Allah, he began to reject, say, no, 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 we didn't used to do that. We didn't used to, we didn't used to prostrate to them and, and bow down to them. How did we used to worship them? So the Messenger of Allah, he said to him, did they used to not make haram what Allah made halal? Then you made it halal. And did they not used to make halal what Allah made haram? And then you made it halal? He said, yes, this is what we used to do. He said, well, this, this, this was your worship of, of them. This is how you used to worship them. And so the Sheikh says, O Shabab of Islam, or youth of Islam, you should know that a najat safety lies in referring judgment back to Allah the safina of Najah, the ship of safety, it is to go to Allah's obedience, to the obedience of the Messenger of Allah. Fafirru ilallah. Flee unto Allah. Flee unto Allah, to Allah, to His judgment. All of the issues of khilaf, return them back to Allah so that the truth becomes clear. And then take the truth. Not because so and so said it. Or because, you know, only because he has the hujjah. And this is how we behave as people of the sunnah. Whoever brings the hujjah, his speech is the one that is followed, whoever that, might, that may be. Right? Because with him is the speech of Allah, is the speech of the messenger. And, وَنَتْرُكْ مَنْ يُخَالِفُهُ كَائِنًا مَنْ كَانْ And whoever opposes that, because he's mistaken, or whatever it might be, or he doesn't have the evidence, or whatever it might be, then we... We, we, we leave that, we abandon that, whoever that may be. However deeply grounded in knowledge he may be, and in worship he may be, and in religion he may be. No, we accept the truth and we abandon what is other than the truth. And the Sheikh says there is a speech that some of the ulama say, and it is worthy that we call it a principle. Right? Sheikh Rabi says this is worthy of being made a principle. He says, um, It's possible that we can call it a principle. He said, Men are known by way of the truth, and truth is not known by way of men. Right? So we don't specify one man and say that the truth is known by way of this one man. Rather, this man is known by way of the truth. Everything which emanates from this man, of his speech, of his action, of his uh, positions, of views, it is known by the truth, not the other way around. And the Sheikh is saying that this is worthy of being called or given, uh, you know, uh, the label of a principle. Ar-rijal yu'rafuna bil haq. Meaning, the Sheikh says, ma naqulu annahum ala haqqin illa idha wajadna al haqq يُؤَيِّدُهُمْ Right? We don't say that a person is upon the truth until we know, until we know, until we know that the evidence is with him and supports him and the Qur'an and the Sunnah supports him and the truth 
is actually with him, right? This is the criterion and this is the principle. So the Sheikh says that um, what is the makhraj, what is the escape, what is the solution when we find all of these khilafat between the Muslims and these disputes, what is, what, what is the way? It is this, it is that a person seeks the truth. He is a seeker of the truth. He must seek the truth. And just like, for example, every person we know that in his life, he tries to, he tries to remove anxiety, right? So in your life, when you wake up in the morning, you're thinking, okay, I don't want any stress. I don't want any... So your, your goal is to remove anxiety from your life. And just like you want to remove poverty from yourself, you don't want to be hungry. You don't want your family to be hungry. This is what you wake up with in the morning. This is what you seek. And... You know, likewise, you, you remove hunger from yourself. These are all things that you know by instinct that, that you do. In the same way a believer, uh, like what Sheikh Rabbi is saying, he also instinctively, he seeks the truth. He's a seeker of truth. He wants the truth. He's not happy with shubuhat. He doesn't want shubuhat going around in his head. Right? He wants the truth. And there has to be a desire for that truth. And... The Sheikh is going to mention something very, very important here, which is many people, many people that they, they, they don't want to, they don't want to seek the truth, right? They, um, you know, the, the, the Sheikh says, before we come to that point, he says that uh, the messenger of Allah, sallam, his guidance is the best of that which is in this world, and in you know in the hereafter, and it is the highest thing in existence. Wa a'la shay'in fil wujud. The greatest and highest thing in existence is the guidance of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and his manhaj, and his tariq, which is al bayda. All of this, he left us with. Its night is like its day. No one deviates from it except one who is halik. Except the one who perishes. And so he says, لا يزيه عنها إلا حالك في أي مجال من المجالات Meaning that if you leave the guidance of the Messenger of Allah in any scenario or situation or area, then you will perish. If it is in aqeedah, if you deviate from the guidance of the Messenger, you will perish. If it is in al-ibad, if it is in worship, and you abandon the guidance of the messenger in worship, then you will, you will perish. Right? And if it is in politics, in siyasa, then you will perish. Right? For dinuna kamilun, shamilun, our religion is complete, comprehensive. A person does not leave anything from the affairs of religion except that he will, you know, except that he will, uh, he will perish. Right? And in every issue there is a mawqif, there is a position that we ought to know and that we should not deviate from. And any person who does so, the Sheikh says that he will, you know, he will, uh, he will, he will be misguided and he will go astray. And the Sheikh says that a person who turns away from the truth whilst he has the ability to distinguish between the truth and falsehood. Right? So I want you to think carefully about this. Right? To help you understand this, let me give you an example about a type of kufr. It's called kufr of i'rad. Right? The kufr of turning away. And this is the case of many of the kufar today where they have the ability to know that Islam is the truth. Right? They've heard of Islam. And they heard that Islam calls to singling out a line worship. And they know Islam calls to this, that, and the other, whatever. And they know. And they actually have the ability to know what is truth from falsehood. If they do not do so, this is the kufr of i'rad. Right? This, this is a type of kufr. Because kufr is of many types. The kufr of juhud. The kufr of istikbar and iba. Right? This is kufr of takdeeb. And in this case, this is the kufr of... The kufr of the kufr of um, i'rab, turning away. So many of the disbelievers, 
they are kuffar and they will enter the hellfire because they had the ability, they had the ability to pursue, they had the means to pursue, yet they didn't, they didn't pursue the truth. Right? In the same way, there can be people who ascribe to the Sunnah, ascribe to Salafi or whatever, and in an issue among the issues, they perfectly have the ability to know the truth, to pursue the truth, to find out the truth, but they choose not to do so. They choose not to do so for a reason among the reasons. Right? And the Sheikh is mentioning this point. He says many of these people, uh, they, either, uh, they, they either do not pursue the truth or they, they, they deviate from the truth after the truth has been made clear. Right? The different categories. Some people, they don't want to pursue and know what the truth is in an issue. Right? Even though they have the ability and they could quite easily do so. And other people, once the truth becomes clear to them, they, they do not want to want to know. They deviate after knowledge. And the Sheikh says, in fact, there are many people who basically, كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ يَتَعَامَ وَيَتَجَاهَلْ Right? وَقَدْ يَكُونَ الْحَقْ فِي مُتَنَاوِلٍ يَدَيْهِ Many people, they pretend to be blind. And they pretend to be ignorant. Even though the truth is, is quite easily reachable in their hands. You could quite easily do it. And many people pretend to be ignorant. You say, Ya Akhi, you know, this shubha is very easy, very simple. Just, you know, you say, yeah, yes, 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 you know, whatever, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe, whatever. Right? They pretend to be ignorant. They pretend to be blind. It's very possible for them to go and sit and find it, but they choose not to do so. The Sheikh says, what the Sheikh moves on to and alludes to after this, is that he says, these traits and these qualities are the traits and qualities which were found with the Jews and with the Christians. This is from the traits of the Yahud and the Nasara, right? And he goes on to mention uh, uh, the, the uh, principle from uh, Surah Al-Fatiha, at the end of Surah Al-Fatiha, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ إِهْدِنَ السِّرَاطُ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ سِرَاطُ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَضَّالِينَ Here there are mentioned three categories of people. Those who have knowledge and who act upon the knowledge. They are the prophets, messengers, the righteous, the martyrs, you know, the whatever. Those who have the knowledge and do not act upon the knowledge. This is the traits of the Yahud. And those who act but without knowledge upon ignorance, and this is the trait of the Christians. And the fact that we say this every day, in every prayer, in every raka'ah, that we ask Allah, protect, you know, uh, not of the path of the, those upon whom is Allah's anger, not of the path upon those whom, uh, who, who are astray, this is a constant reminder to us all the time that a Muslim is in danger or in an issue among the issues or numerous issues that, that he can either follow the way of the Yahud or that he can either follow the way of the Christians, right? Either he can act upon ignorance or he may reject the truth and not act upon when the knowledge comes to him, right? So the Sheikh is saying that this is a danger that you find many people fall into. Uh, people who claim ascription to the Sunnah, claim ascription to Salafiyyah, very easy for them to know the truth in an issue, to remove the shubha, remove the misconception, but they decide not to. Right? This now is a resemblance to the ways of the Yahud and, and the Nasara. The Sheikh mentions the statement of some of the Salaf, مَنْ ضَلَّ مِنْ عُلَمَائِنَا فَفِيهِ شَبَهٌ مِنَ الْيَهُودِ وَمَنْ ضَلَّ مِنْ عُبَّادِنَا فَفِيهِ شَبَهٌ مِنَ النَّصَارَى Whoever went astray from our scholars, then in him is a resemblance to the Yahud. And whoever went astray from our worshippers, then within him is a resemblance of the Nasara, of the Christians. And so the Sheikh says, you see many of the servants of Allah, they worship Allah upon jahl and dalal, upon ignorance and upon misguidance and you know, with, with, with innovations. And if you were to explain the truth to him, maybe inshallah, many, many people are genuinely ignorant, right? Many Muslims are genuinely ignorant. And that's because they are misled by evil scholars. 
you know, in the countries, that's all they know. All they know is a Sufi tariqah. All they know is, you know, something like this. But if you were to go to them and tell them and guide them, and, and you know, maybe many of them, they would, they, would, they would leave the misguidance. And, however, many of the scholars that they follow are upon batil. And, you know, the only thing that prevents them from accepting the truth is, 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 is dhulm and oppression and rejection of the truth. Right, the Sheikh goes on to mention an example from his uh, travels when he went, and you know he met with some Buddhist, and you know to show how people reject the truth when the truth is obvious. So he travelled and, and he he uh, you know he went and he saw this uh, Buddhist, and he said. He says, look, even the common people of the, of the Jews, of the Christians, of the Hindus, of the Majus, you know, deep inside their souls, they know that Allah Azawajal is the Rabb. They know that He is above His creation, right? They know that Allah is the one who's created, created the heaven, created the earth, and so on and so forth, right? And He says that I went to one of the lands of India, and I had a group of teachers with me. And, you know, I asked, um, you know, I said to them that if you were to ask, if you were to go to one of these uh, places of, of, of Buddha, the Buddhists, and you were to go and ask them, and he himself asked, you know, who created you? And the Buddhist says, the creator, Allah, well, the creator. Who created the heaven? It is the creator. Who created you? The earth. The creator. Where is Allah? Above, above the heaven. And then asked them the question, so why do you not then worship him? Who created Buddha? Allah. So why then, do, why then do you not worship Allah then? And so you can see from these people, you can ask this question to anybody, even Christian, Jew, Buddhist, Hindu, they will answer all the same, same questions, that there is a supreme Lord creator who is the creator of the heavens, the earth, of man, of, 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 of everything. But when you ask them, you know, they, they affirm Allah's rububiyyah, then why do, you, why do you worship Buddha then? Right? When you affirm in your soul, you know that you are, you are affirming Rububiyya for Allah Azza And then Shaykh mentions all of those ayat in the Quran. You know, وَلَا إِن سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَيَكُولُنَّ الله. If you were to ask them who created the heavens and the earth, they would surely say Allah. These same questions were, were posed to the mushrik, mushrikeen by the Messenger of Allah. And they said, it is Allah. Allah created the heavens and the earth. Allah created us. Allah is the Lord of the seven heavens and the arsh. Right. How then are you deluded from this? So the Sheikh is saying, these people, what it is, it is arrogance. It is arrogance. إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا إِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا إِلَّهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ Indeed, they used to say when it was said to them, لَا إِلَّهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ they would, they would be arrogant. أَجَعَلَ الْآلِهَةَ إِلَهًا وَاحِدًا إِنَّ هَذَا لَشِيءٌ عُجَابٌ has he made all of the gods into a single god? Indeed, this is something strange. Right? So, so this is arrogance that makes a person reject the truth. And so just like you find this is the way and the trait of, of these people, of, of the Buddhists, of the Yahud, of the Nasara, of the Mushrikun, the polytheists, the pagans, the, 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 you know, uh, those who worship the graves, whatever, a person can reject the truth. Even the scholars of the, of the Sufis and, and when the Hujjah is established against them, they, they can't let go of this because they have too many followers and they have a status and they have a position. It is arrogance that makes them reject the truth. That in the same way, because we recite these ayat every day, it is possible that you know, we may fall into the same thing. So we have to be careful. We don't want to follow in the path of the Jews, rejecting the truth after it's been made clear. And nor do we want to follow the way of the Nasara, just following ignorance and misguidance without knowledge, without understanding, without fiqh, and just worshipping worshiping and following upon ignorance. No, these are traits that we have to remove from ourselves. And so the Shaykh is indicating that these problems or these mashakil or, these confu- or all of these issues, the confusion, right? We are in danger of falling into this if we do not have the desire for the truth and to pursue the truth. How can a person, when he hears the hadith, this hadith of Al-Irbad, how can a person, when he hears this hadith, 
that I have left you upon Al Bayda. Its night is like its day. No one deviates from it except that he is destroyed. How can a person listen to this hadith? And how can he, the messenger, say that whoever amongst you lives for long will see great controversy, great difference? And we see it now everywhere. Great difference, you see. Upon you is to cling to the Sunnah and the Sunnah of the Khulafa. Bite onto it with your molars and beware of innovations for all innovations. How can a person not have the desire to want to seek the truth and to put aside his hawa and to put aside his arrogance and to put aside everything? How can a person not be like this? The person who does not have this quality to begin with, then he will perish. Exactly as the Sheikh mentioned. You find some people, they pretend to be blind or they don't want to know the truth. We cannot have these qualities, Ya Ikhwan. These, these are qualities of, of ruin and these are qualities of of destruction. Uh, the Sheikh continues and he, uh, you know, he, he says that this unfortunately is the hal of the way of many of those who ascribe to Islam, meaning in the issue of Tawheed and Shirk. Many of the people they ascribe to Islam, they affirm Allah's rububiyyah, but you see them, you know, they will write many, many volumes on Tawheed ar rububiyyah but you see them going around the graves, seeking aid from the people in the graves, sacrificing to the graves, traveling to the graves, you know, uh, making istighatha through them, seeking rescue from them. Um, uh, all these things that people do, uh, even the Christians, they're, 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 when they refute the atheists, they write about rububiyya. When you, when you read the books of the Christians, they write about in refuting the atheists, right? So they affirm the rububiyya. They refute the communists, they refute the atheists, the Sheikh says, but Tawheed al-Ibadah, they are misguided in this issue, right? And that is because they do not judge back to Allah and to his book and to the truth and they, you know, are upon, are upon you know, arrogance and misguidance. The Sheikh goes on to elaborate something similar. We can, inshallah, wind down and come to the end of, of uh, our lesson today, inshallah, but I hope that some of these essential points that the Sheikh has mentioned, that we take benefit from this. Um, you know, essentially, uh, we are advised to return back to the original affair, to the very first affair, to what the Sahaba were upon. This is what is mentioned by many of the Salaf. Uh, Ibn Abbas said, Alikum bil Alika bil istiqama, wa tabi'i wa tabi'il amr, wa tabi'il amr al awwal, wala tabtadir. Upon you is to remain upright and follow the very first affair and do not innovate. Do not innovate. Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he said the same thing, radiallahu anhu. He said, Iyakum wa tabaddu' wa tanattu' wa ta'ammuq wa alaykum bil atiq. Beware of innovating and beware of extremism. And beware of the ammuk, which is me, me just delving into something too deeply and speculating, and you know, and upon you is to follow the ancient way, the very first, you know, the very first uh, way. Abdullah bin Saud also he said, "Rabbillahu anhu, Inna kum al yom al al fitra, wasa tuhdithuna, wasa wasa tuhdithu, wasa tuhdithu, wasa tuhdithuna, wa yuhdathu lakum." Indeed, you are upon the fitra today. And you will introduce things, and things will be introduced for you. فَإِذَا رَأَيْتُمْ مُحْدَثًا فَعَلِيكُمْ بِالْحَدْيِ الْأَوَّلِ And when you see something that is an introduced or innovated affair, then upon you is to return back to the original affair. Abu Al-Aliya, the Tabi'i, he said, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ عَلِيكُمْ بِالْأَمْرِ الْأَوَّلِ أَلَّذِي كَانُوا عَلَيْهِ قَبْلَ Upon you is with the first affair that they used to be upon before they split and before they became divided. Right? So this is the solution. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given us the solution to all of these problems. You must have the desire for the truth to begin with. Free of asabiyya, hizbiyya, hawa, whatever else. You must be a desire of truth. And secondly... Any statement, any qawl, any, any, any statement, any creed, 
any action, any behavior, any position that you that, that you are confused about that, that comes to you, then you go and you find, okay, were well, the Salaf upon this? Did the Salaf say this? Have the scholars identified and, and derived this from, from what the Salaf were upon? You must be a seeker of the truth. And in this way, the ikhtilaf, the controversy, it, it is removed, it is diminished, because if we all hold on to the true position, the true belief, the, the, the correct mawaqif, the correct, you know, whatever, then we are removing the ikhtilaf from ourselves. So this, and there, to be honest, there are many, many more uh, benefits uh, from what the Shaykh mentioned. And as for Shaykh Al-Fawzan, uh, Hafidhahullah Ta'ala, he actually said something identical to what Shaykh Rabi said, you know, very, very quickly uh, in his speech. Uh, basically, he mentioned the very same verses uh, at the end of Surah Al-Fatiha. Right? He mentioned how the Yahud and the Nasara went astray. It is either kibber and arrogance in not accepting the truth, or it is proceeding upon, upon jahl and dalal. And how the solution is, uh, as the Shaykh says, تَرَقْتُكُمْ عَلَى الْبَيْدَى لَا يَزِيغُ عَنْهَا إِلَّا حَالِكِ Al-Bayda, it is the way, it is the mahajjah, it is the way of the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions and the salaf, right? This is the, the path that is worthy of being followed. And the Shaykh basically mentioned exactly the same thing that Shaykh Rabi bin Hadi, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, that he mentioned. So inshallah we can uh, conclude, uh, hope that from this uh, tremendous lecture of Shaykh Rabi that we take some, that we take heed and we take benefit and that we you know, sit and we make muhasaba of ourselves and ask that, you know, in this issue, am I really following the haqq or is it my hawa? In this position, is it really based on evidence or is it upon hawa? Right? A person should make muhasaba of his nafs. Just like we know, it's not only in the matter of sin and obedience and disobedience that you make muhasaba of the soul. You know, uh, you, know you, 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 you call your soul to account in the issues of sin and disobedience. Likewise, in the issue of, of, of religion, of creed, in positions in religion, in your friendships that you have, your allegiances that you have, your loyalties that you have, ask yourself, call yourself to account. Is this friendship for the sake of Allah? Is it upon the truth? Is it upon the sunnah? Is it upon you? Ask yourself, question yourself. This muhasaba, as the Shaykh mentioned, this is what every believer should, you know, who seeks the truth, it is what he should be doing. So, there are many, many things to reflect, reflect upon here. Uh, much great advice, uh, admonition from the Shaykh based upon the tremendous hadith of Al-Irbad bin Sariya. So with that, we'll conclude our uh, reminder there for today. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.